Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we're going to get in the mood for the Halloween slash autumn season and paint this skull with butterfly. Make sure you check out the video description below for the reference image for this as well as the grid that I made for a 12 by 16 inch canvas. And also make sure you check out the materials list. Remember that you are absolutely more than welcome to use any colors that suit you. The colors I've used here are not the only colors that can be used. Anything you have, anything you like, anything you're comfortable with. Now let's get started. Today I will be using my Black Fredericks 12 by 16 inch canvas pad. Remember this is not a sheet of paper, this is an actual sheet of canvas. And I kind of jumped ahead a bit here. I've already got my one by one inch grid on my canvas. And you can download the image for free, the reference image with the 12 by 16 grid on it. And that's in the video description below. There's a link to my website where you can get that for free. If you need more information on gridding, how to maybe put it on a different size grid or just any questions you have about gridding, make sure you check out the video description below because there is a link to a blog post on my website where I kind of give you the ins and outs of gridding and show you how you can grid any image to any size canvas that you like. Now I'm just going to do this part in time lapse. I know I don't do a lot of time lapse anymore, but I'm just kind of sketching this at my own pace, making a couple of errors and having to go back and fix that. So we're just going to kind of jump ahead a little bit here. You could even really do this in a monochromatic way, you know, with just black and white or Payne's gray or even, you know, a brown or a chromatic black, anything you like. This would look really awesome in, in just about any color palette you can imagine. Now to get started here, I'm going to use my half inch flat brush that I've wet in the jar and I'm going to load up with some burnt sienna and a little bit of Naples yellow. I'm just kind of looking for a warm color in between the two. I'm really looking for my mid-tone value, so not a super light color, not a super dark color. I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of ultramarine blue to mix in there just to gray that color down a little bit because I don't want it to be like a bright orangey color. And I'm using a little bit of matte medium because I like the way that it makes the paint feel and the way it blends, but you don't have to. So what I'm really doing here is looking at my reference image and I'm just starting to block in my values. I've kind of decided where I see a lot of those mid-tones and that's where I'm kind of laying this color in. I'm not worried about what these brush strokes look like. I'm not worried about covering all of the canvas. I'm not even worried if I get my values right at this point. I'm just kind of playing around with that and deciding, is this where I want to see that color? If it's not, I'll cover it up with the next one. But I'm just kind of starting to feel, feel those values out. So I'm just going to go through and pretty much add the same color wherever I feel like I see the mid-tones. Now I know a lot of times you guys ask if I will keep the reference image up on the screen and that's not something that I can really do. First of all, it would be distracting, it would cover part of the canvas, it would, you know, overlap and I'd have to keep moving it around, but also it can get confusing if what you see me doing isn't what you see in the reference image or even in the fin finished painting, you might be confused. But all of these layers that I'm doing build toward the final image. And you don't have to worry that you're putting your values in the same place I am or you know, even necessarily in the quote unquote right place. I'm just kind of putting them where I feel like they might should go. I know I can change it later, just like you can change it later. Not to mention, my, fi my final painting doesn't really look a whole lot like the reference image. The reference image, I feel like when I use a reference image, I'm using it as a guideline, not as a goal. So my goal is not to make my painting look just like the reference image. 
You know, I may look at something on my reference image and see a heavy shadow in one area, but I feel like in my painting that shadow looks out of place. So I might put a highlight there instead, and that's okay. It's, you know, you're, you're not supposed to follow your reference image to an absolute T. You're just supposed to take from it what you like and make everything else up as you go along. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. And that's what I want you to feel free to do as well. So I'm just gonna finish laying in this value and then we'll move on to the next value. Now I'm gonna mix my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue, and there's still a little bit of yellow in that mixture. And I'm looking for just right about the darkest color I can get with those two. And I'm gonna start laying them in where I see my darkest values in the image. It doesn't matter, again, if I'm covering all of the black. It doesn't matter if they're in the right place. It doesn't matter if they're darker or lighter than where I put them. I'm just, when I paint like this and I kind of do this blocking, I'm really just making myself a reminder. I'm reminding myself, I think I want it dark right here. I'm reminding myself, I think I might want it light over here. But none of that is set in stone. I can change any of it at any moment. Also, if at any time here, it looks like I'm mixing white in with my paint, or that I'm putting white on my canvas, it's just matte medium. I'm not using white at all just yet. Remember your soft brush strokes. You can put full pressure on your brush to kind of plop down the paint where you want it, but then go up onto the tip of the brush to kind of burst that little plop of paint out and spread it a little bit. Don't do these broad back and forth sweeps with your brush like you're blending. You're just gonna keep laying paint down and blending paint together and you're gonna end up with a muddy mess. Use a light touch, you know, just kind of plop it down like I did right there and then go up onto the tip of the brush to just lightly break that up and blend it in if you need. Remember full pressure, laying the brush flat and swiping that is intended to lay paint down. If your goal at the moment is not to lay paint down but to blend it, you should be using the tip of the brush, nice soft pressure. So again, I'm just gonna lay this where I see my darkest values. And that doesn't include the dark, like the black areas inside of the eyes or the nose, just on the outside of the skull. I'm so super excited for Halloween. And, you know, I, I promise to try not to bombard you with straight up Halloween paintings from here until October 31st, but figured early September was the perfect time to go ahead and get started on that. And I figured why not start it off with a bang? So here we are with this image.
as always. If you don't have a black canvas, you can paint a canvas black or use black gesso or any color you like. I actually did a quick version of this in acrylic with my Patreon group a week or so ago and I did it on a, a white canvas and I gave it a ultramarine blue underpainting and that looked really interesting. And that's almost what I did for the video today, but and I decided the black would be a much more appropriate underpainting for, for this painting. So that's why I went with that. But yeah, you can definitely take a white canvas and paint it black or ultramarine or gold or whatever you want to do. Still just working those dark values in. We're going to switch over to our lightest values and, and kind of start bringing those three sections a little bit closer together. So here we go. I've cleaned off my brush. I'm going to grab a tiny swipe of that Burnt Sienna Ultramarine mixture and get my Naples Yellow. I want to bring all three of those colors in there because the Naples Yellow it's a little sunny, a little cheerful, a little too bright, but if I can gray it down a little like that, I feel like it'll be a little bit more appropriate for the painting. So now I'm looking at my image and just kind of plopping down this yellow color where I feel like my skull is going to be the brightest. Now I want to be completely straightforward with you guys and let you know that there were a few times in fact, there were probably several times through this painting where I was quite unhappy with what was happening. I, I wasn't letting myself get stressed out though because it's, that's just not how I work anymore. You know, I've put a lot of practice into, into keeping my stress at bay and I know that I can fix anything. And if there happens to be something I can't fix, I can start over. So I wasn't stressed out at all, but not being stressed out by your painting doesn't mean that you don't have to recognize if things aren't working out the way you want. So I definitely went through several phases where I was like, mm, this does not, this isn't what I want to be happening. I don't really like what's happening here. But what I did was think to myself, something I say to you guys all the time, well, you know, if I don't like it, then it can't possibly get any worse. I mean, I already don't like it, right? Can't get any worse. And if it can't get any worse, then there's no harm in continuing. And now I can free myself up to just explore and play with brush strokes, play with the different color mixtures and just see what happens. And I find that a really fascinating thing happens when I open myself up to that. When I look at my canvas and I think, well, this can't get any worse. Let's just keep going. I kind of fall into this mode of, I don't care. I don't care how this painting turns out, but I'm going to see it through to the end just for the practice. I just want the practice and the experience. And so I'm going to see it all the way through to the end. And a lot of times when I can find that place where I genuinely don't care if the painting fails or succeeds, usually what happens is it turns out so much better than I could have hoped for. And it's because when you put pressure on yourself to perform, when you think, oh, this has to look like this, you put so much pressure on yourself and it makes, it makes everything harder. It really does. But if you genuinely don't care, but you keep going, you, there's a difference between not caring if it turns out horrible and, you know, putting forth effort. You can, you can still not care about a painting and put forth effort. So you just kind of detach yourself from the outcome. I think that's what it is. And I don't know if you could tell when I first started, there was already like old dried paint on my palette. Usually I use a brand new palette for you guys, but 
when I started this one, I really thought I'm just going to run through this painting really quick and, and see if I'm ready to record it. And a lot of times I record my practices, whether it's because I want to look back and, you know, see what kind of techniques I used or remember what colors I used. But sometimes it's because occasionally the practice turns out better than the actual painting that I would record. So I decided to record my practice and I used an old palette in the process. So that's why my palette looks all gunky and used up. I hadn't actually planned on giving you this version, but I loved the way it turned out. So I decided that this one was perfect for the video. I'm just kind of going back and forth in my values right now. You know, I'm starting to build on them. I've got the three, my mid-tone, which is kind of that orange color, the dark values, which is the brown, and the light values, which is the yellow. And now I'm still using my half inch flat. And I'm just going back and forth with, with the color mixtures. I think I wash my brush very rarely, if ever, here. If I feel like I have too much of one color on my brush and I need to go the opposite end, like if my brush is too dark and I want a really pale color, I usually just wipe it on a paper towel because it's easier than trying to get all three colors back on my brush, you know, after washing it. Notice how light my brush pressure is though. I'm not it's really only about the top quarter of my brush that's touching the canvas. It's not the full length of the brush touching. Just kind of focusing on my shapes. And right there, I wanted to make sure that my brush strokes were moving in the right direction. That was a very directional area on the skull, right there from that eye socket to the, the bridge of the nose and then from the bridge of the nose down into the cheekbone. Those were areas that I felt like I was struggling with a little bit and you can see me kind of get frustrated later on. I'll point that out to you. I'm not ashamed. I'll show you where I was getting a little frustrated. But like I said, I didn't give up. I just kept experimenting and changing and seeing what happens. Here I did wash my brush. I'm getting a, a as dark of a mixture as I can between the blue and the burnt sienna. I have a little extra water on my brush and I'm just going to flick some little splatters, just kind of playing with the texture at this point. The skull in the reference image has so much texture on it, so many different textures that, you know, I kind of felt, I felt pretty confident to just play with textures and not be afraid of any of them. You could even come back and splatter some of the lighter colors on it if you like. I don't think I did that. I, I didn't do that, but I did think about it. So, you know, if you wanted to experiment with that and splatter some lighter colors, go for it. And I, I'm pretty sure once I do these splatters, I don't really wait for them to dry. So some of them are still wet when I go over with the next layer and they get blended in. Some of them dried, some of them didn't get touched. That's my number six round and a little bit of black paint. I'm just gonna come into the eyeball, start kind of refining the shape of the eye socket. As I was building some of those textures, I may have gotten out of line a little bit. So I'm just kind of cleaning that up reminding myself where those shapes are and sometimes filling that in and seeing that in solid black rather than the, the black of the canvas and the grid lines, it helps me see how everything is kind of coming together. So I'm just gonna fill in that eye, the edge of the other eye and the nose and then we'll start moving on with the textures again.
I'm not going right up to the butterfly here, just keeping it to the edge of the eye socket. Don't make too solid of lines here in the nose. It's very jaggedy and you want to leave yourself room to have a very jagged edge to your nose. So don't make this perfect plump little <laughs> smooth heart shape on there. Let it be a little raggedy. Now I'm going to my Fuzzbert, which is just my number eight Filbert that's all old, fuzzy, and puffy. It doesn't matter that it's a, a Filbert. It just matters that it's a smaller brush that's puffy and old that you're okay doing a little scrubbing with. I'm mixing up my light color again, and this time I did add a little bit of white to it. We're gonna really start playing with the shadows and highlights, and I'm starting with my highlights. and I'm just gonna lightly start laying it in next to the nose. Again, a little bit of a, a flat brush stroke just to plop down some color, and then right up onto the tip of the brush to break it up, spread it around. Don't worry about things blending, don't worry about things looking ugly or wrong or right, any of that. Again, we're still just kind of exploring where those colors and those values are gonna go. Occasionally, if I have a hard line that I really don't like, you'll see me pick up a little bit of matte medium, kind of plop it down on that edge, and then I might swipe it out with my finger. See, so just playing with my colors and values, a little bit of orange, slightly darker. Don't get too hung up on trying to perfectly replicate any of the details that you see in your in your reference image. You'll see as we go along, I'm very general with the teeth. The teeth are an area that I think you could easily get hung up on, trying to make the teeth look exactly like they are in the image. There's a lot going on there, you know, between the shadows and the lights and the shapes and the sizes and the textures. You really could make yourself crazy trying to make those teeth exactly the way you see in the reference image. So I went the other direction and said, I actually don't really care about the teeth. <laughs> you know, the, the thing that you're gonna wanna look at the very most in this picture, I think, is the butterfly. And then kind of the overall texture and, and values of the skull. I don't think anybody's gonna be really scrutinizing the teeth. So I was very general with the teeth. When I looked at them, I said, oh, there's a highlight that roughly moves in this direction. So I kind of just plopped down a little, a little plunk of a highlight and maybe a little plunk of a shadow. And, you know, I think in the end, it was effective to say, these are the teeth, but in no way would you look at the teeth that I did and look at my reference image and say, oh yeah, that's this tooth and that's this highlight because I didn't care about any of that. I'm 
whenever you feel like you get something a little bit too light, just grab a darker color and just keep on trucking. And that's just what I did there. I am still just using that kind of light scrubby pressure. You'll see me plop down a little spot of color here and there. And then just with the tip of the brush kind of scumble it out. See a little plop there, just plop down some of that color. Tip of the brush to move it around. Don't be afraid to scribble. I think a lot of people are afraid of scribbling. They feel like, you know, the, the loss of control is terrifying. But to me, scribbling is what really gives me the look that I want. And I feel like, you know, when I tighten up and try to be too blendy and precise, that's when I struggle the most. But when I can just kind of cut free and just scribble, then I feel the most satisfied. And, and I feel like my, my painting works with me a little bit better. That that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you if you haven't really cut loose and, and just let yourself scribble. But yeah, I think if you, if you allow yourself to scribble and you don't scrutinize anything too tightly, you'll be much happier. Just picked up a little white with whatever color I had on my brush and scattering it loosely through there. I think right about here is where you're going to start seeing my brush strokes just kind of like fly across the canvas. It might look like I'm starting to kind of give up and get a little frustrated. And I think this is about where I was starting to get kind of frustrated. It just looked so horrible to me. And I thought, I don't know. I think my colors are, I, I should have picked different colors. And you know, all of these things, and I was just getting super frustrated and unhappy with how it was looking. So you can tell by how loose and just haphazard my brush strokes are here. I, I didn't really care at this point because I figured I'm just gonna end up starting over anyway and that's perfectly fine. But I decided I'll see it through just see what else I can learn from this experience before I decide to give up on this one and start again. See there, I'm just kind of slapping it around. I'm like, oh, this looks so bad. And I think that as I go, you can kind of see where I transitioned from, from feeling that haphazard, oh, this looks so bad, to, okay, wait, I might have a handle on this. <laughs> I think I'm actually kind of starting to fall into that now. Let's see, my brush strokes are a little bit more controlled. I'm putting a little bit more effort into that. But again, all I'm doing is looking at my reference image to kind of see where I see my values. As far as the colors, I'm making up the colors that I want to see in certain areas. I'm not, I'm not trying to mimic my reference image exactly. I'm just saying, okay, around that spot of the eye, it's mostly highlighted. It's pretty bright down there by the side of the nose. So I'm generally doing those things knowing I can make any corrections I need later.
that Naples yellow is a really unique color. It's really a lot of fun to use and it's just such a soft and versatile yellow that I don't know how I did without it before. If it's a color you don't have, I recommend you get some and try it out. I resisted it for a long time thinking, what am I going to use that color for? I don't really like that color. It just kind of looks like pale yellow oxide. I don't know what I would use that color for. And then I bought some when Hobby Lobby had it clearanced and man, I use it all the time now. Now all I'm doing is taking the darkest color I can get with the brown and the blue and just kind of stippling, like stabbing the canvas in little spots to, to add a little texture. I mixed the tiniest amount of black in that mixture. And as you can see, I'm just kind of, I'll do a little swipe, a little stab on the canvas, just working on the texture there. I think I just wiped my brush on a paper towel there just to get a lot of that paint off so I could change the color a bit. I love to paint in a limited color palette like this so that I don't have to clean my brush, you know, in between each color. It's really nice to, you know, not have to ruin your flow by stopping and washing your brush and mixing your next color. It's really great for me anyway to just kind of grab one color, grab another color and, and do that almost haphazardly. But now I've gone to my number two and I've picked up a very pale color. It's a mixture of the white and Naples yellow. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of the burnt umber or burnt sienna, sorry. And I'm just adding little points of light on the edge of that opening. I thought that was one of the things that I really liked about the skull a lot were the little bright spots around the edge there. I felt like that was super interesting. So I want to make sure that I get a good, a good highlight there, making sure to include some pure white. But notice I'm not fully outlining that entire shape. If you fully outline it, it's going to look really cartoony, kind of phony. So I'm just putting little bits of it in places. Some places I'm leaving perfectly dark. As you can tell, I've been picking up my fingernail polish this week. I was going to try and repaint my nails for you guys before I started my video, but because I felt like this was just going to be a practice attempt, I didn't feel like it mattered. And then it ended up being the actual video. So I appreciate your patience while I have really rugged looking nails. This little number two round gets a workout today. I actually do quite a bit of scrubbing with it. So if scrubbing isn't something you're comfortable with on your little tiny brush, you might want to use a different one. But like I've said before, I would rather use a brush in a way that damages it 
to get the look that I want than to be super gentle on a brush and not be able to achieve what it is that I want. Brushes are replaceable, experience is not. Just little bits of that bright color around the edge of the eye hair. Just a little bit on this little opening in the eye socket. I actually didn't see a lot of highlight right there on the reference image, but I felt like that was what my painting needed to look right. So I went ahead and added it. So that's what I'm talking about. You're always free to make decisions about your painting. If you see something on your reference image that you don't feel like translates well to your painting or that just doesn't look right to you for whatever reason. You are free to change it. I'm just kind of stippling some of that white color with some matte medium through here. Again, just in an effort to build some texture. I know that white is kind of stark and a little bit shocking looking there, but I know that I'm not done, and so it doesn't really matter to me. little extra water for that bright white and I'm going to do the same type of thing over here just a bit of some you know bright points on the edge of that of that eye socket and I'm kind of reshaping it a little too as you can tell my shape is a little off and so I'm kind of changing the shape of it a bit See, doing a little scumbling there with that number two round. I'm probably going to have another little fuzzbird, but it won't be a bird because it won't be a filbert. But I think we can officially call any fuzzed out scrubby brush a fuzzbird <laughs> from here on out. So this little number two round is fixing to be a fuzzbird. See how general I'm being with the teeth there. Just kind of a couple of up and down brush strokes, a, a side to side brush stroke here and there. And that's really all I feel like it needed. I definitely don't see any bright highlights right there in my reference image, but see, I put it in, decided it was too much scribbled it out a little bit with some darker color. This is an image I've seen going around for a long time. I remember looking at this image on Pixabay years ago and you know, thinking it would be a really fun painting to do. And certainly I've seen other versions of it here and there, but I figured it was finally time to, to do this one for you guys. So I kind of edited the image down a little bit so that I could get my own, you know, unique composition on the image. So it wasn't just another painting of the skull with the butterfly in its eye. 
And that's really how you kind of make an image your own. You know, you can end up taking a reference image that gets used over and over again, but it's, it's what you do with it that makes it yours. You know, the, the way that I've cropped this image, I altered the color just a little bit, just to give me an idea of how I wanted to select my colors for the painting. The techniques that I use, the colors that I use, all of those things are what make it my painting. And that's really what I want you guys to always feel free to do, you know, to, to decide how you want to see it. Not, not just feel like you have to recreate the reference image the way that you see it. Because if you and everyone else tries to recreate the reference image exactly as I see it, then you and everyone else are going to come out with the same painting. And that's no fun, you know? But if 50, if 50 people sat down with the same reference image and, you know, kind of carte blanche to do whatever they wanted, any materials, any techniques, you know, any interpretation of the painting, all 50 people would come away with a painting completely unique from everybody else. And that's what's really exciting to me. That's what art is about. Art is not about, you know, just doing your best to make something exactly like something else. See, now that I'm, you know, working on those little bits of texture, you can kind of see how it's starting to pull all of the different layers together. And certainly we still have some very expressive brush strokes in there, but all of those layers are starting to work together to create an overall look. And all I'm doing here with my number two is I've got some of my darker color. I'm mixing the tiniest, tiniest amount of black in with my blue and brown. And I'm just kind of generally creating some of those little, you know, bone plate lines or fractures or whatever it is we see in the reference image there. I'm not trying to mimic any of them exactly. I'm just generally kind of scumbling in a couple of little lines. And I feel like they did a good enough job of, of suggesting those little cracks and lines that we see in the reference image. Sometimes in a painting, all you really have to do is suggest. You don't have to, you know, give every single little detail. Sometimes just suggesting something is enough to make your viewer absolutely see that whole, that whole thing. So by putting a couple of those little lines in here and suggesting those little cracks and fissures, I think that I get the point across even though I certainly didn't put all of them in and I didn't, you know, spend very much time on them. I think they get the, the point across there. Really the techniques that I'm using here are very, very similar to the techniques that I used in the Buddha painting a couple of months ago. So if you did the Buddha painting with me, really this is exactly the same thing. I may be doing it just a little bit quicker and I'm definitely using different colors, but technique wise, this is all very, very similar to what I did in that painting.
Nice and dark right along the edge of that eye because I feel like that creates a lot of drama. I've got some good light in that eye. And if I can go nice and dark around the edge of it, that will create that drama and realism that I really want to achieve in, you know, at least the values. We've got expressive kind of impressionistic brush strokes, but I feel like with the values that I have, the light and the dark, that's where we can create that level of realism. little matte medium I'm kind of glazing a little hint of that dark color just to give it an aged look I think I was again starting to get a little bit frustrated right here with this section that spot right there transitioning out of the eye and up onto the bridge of the nose for some reason gave me a couple of fits so if you feel like you're struggling with that area just you know kind of take a little bit of a break take a step back from it don't scrutinize it too hard you know try to look at it like somebody who hasn't been staring at it for hours while they paint you know try to look at it as somebody who's just seeing it for the first time and i know that that might not make a lot of sense but if you think about when you see when you see a painting sometimes you don't home in on the little bits that that maybe the artist struggled with you don't really see that you see the overall image so that's really what i want you to do if you're struggling get away from it for a little bit and then when you come in, try to look at it as if you're seeing it for the first time. Just kind of dashing little hints of a couple other colors into the teeth. See how I'm just really scattershotting that color. It's almost like a hand, like a quick handwriting motion. Like you're trying to write something just really fast. That's almost what I think of when I, when I do like that. We're going to start on the butterfly. I'm going to start with some of my burnt sienna and some white and when you mix those together you almost get this peachy orange color so yeah in in the butterfly I use the exact same colors I used in the skull no more and no less the exact same colors so I'm gonna get a really pale peach color still using my number two round and I'm just gonna start kind of slashing that color through Notice I'm just using the tip of the brush and that's it. See how I'm just running those little brush strokes, letting the edge be fractured. Because in the reference image, the butterfly wing, the edge is a little bit, you know, bumpy. It's not a perfectly smooth edge. Little Naples. Mix that into the white. I didn't clean off my brush. A nice pale version of that Naples color. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. There were a couple of times in this butterfly where I thought, oh, this butterfly looks so bad. 
But again, it was all about layers. You know, the more layers I applied, the more I was able to push and pull it toward the final product that I wanted. Notice I'm not blending anything. I'm just laying down a brush stroke and leaving it. I'm not trying to change, you know, the, the transition from one color to the next. As you can tell, I'm not even really worried about covering all of the black. I end up with a lot of the black canvas still showing when I'm done here. I did wash off my brush there, and now I'm gonna move into some white and ultramarine. A little bit of that blue. However, I don't want that blue to be so shocking, so I am gonna grab the tiniest hint of Naples and mix it in there. They don't make a vibrant green. That Naples is just gonna kind of mute down the ultramarine just a little bit. Same thing, just kind of swiping through there so that the outer edge of the butterfly wing is a little bit broken. I love these colors together like this with the, the kind of peachy pink and the yellow and the blue. It almost starts to give the butterfly wing a little bit of an iridescent look, a little bit opalescent. And I thought that that was really exciting. I was hoping that that would happen <laughs> with these colors. But, you know, like I said, this was my first this was my first shot at the painting. I hadn't done any practicing, so I hadn't painted the butterfly at all until just now. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty lucky that those colors worked out the way that they did. I picked up a little bit extra ultramarine in that one, so the color's a little bit darker. A little bit more of that yellow. These colors all work so well together in here. Again, try not to be too stuck on your reference image for the butterfly. I used it to get an idea of where I wanted things to go, but ultimately I kind of followed my gut instinct. And if I felt like I needed blue in one spot, I put blue there, even if my reference image had orange or black or white or whatever. A little bit of black now, and this is where I'm gonna go around the outer edge of the wing. Remember before I just went around the outer edge of the eye socket, but now I'm going to fill in that entire area and reshape the eye socket just a little bit.
I'm just taking a little bit of uh, brown color, a little bit slightly lighter than the black there, right at the bottom of the orbital socket, just to indicate kind of the floor where the butterfly might be standing. It's very, very subtle effect. And now I'm just right back into the black my number two round and just kind of dotting some little holes and and texture there i decided to extend a little crack up the the bridge of the nose there Felt like maybe that was just a little bit longer than I wanted, so I came back with a clean, damp brush and just wiped a little bit of it away. Tiny point of white, and I'm gonna indicate those highlights on the crack there. Back to our butterfly. Sorry my plate is so washed out there. It's really hard to light a canvas when I'm painting on a black canvas. It's kind of the Naples yellow white color. It's very, very pale. It's almost just white. And just sketching some of that in again. Little bits of matte medium to thin it down. See now, because I'm kind of going back and forth with those colors, very gently, not blending them, some lighter and some darker values, we're starting to get a bit of depth in the butterfly, a little bit of some opalescence, a little bit of that burnt sienna in there again. I just mixed it in with the yellow. I like to weave the colors together like that, you know, start with one color, move to another one, go back to that first one so that you get the colors that they look a little bit more, you know, intertwined, a little bit more natural and not so much this color plopped on top of this color. It's very pale, very, very pale blue. A little matte medium to thin it down a little. Throw a little bit of that yellow in there just so it's not such a bright, intense blue. Just graze it down a tiny bit. I'm just using the tip of the brush and just almost sketching with it. A couple little highlights on the, the bug body with that same super pale blue color that I was just using. A little bit of a darker version of that blue, still including a little bit of that yellow. some little legs. If you need to get a different brush to get the narrow little legs, that's fine. 
My number two has a pretty sharp point on it, so I felt pretty confident to get those little lines with this brush. A little bit of matte medium, tiny bit of black, a little bit of a transparent version of black, but again, if you're not using matte medium, it's okay. You can just use black. Just be very gentle with how much you apply. I'm just using the very, very tip of the brush, and I'm gently going to start creating some little veins and other detail-y bits in her butterfly wing. I'm generally following, following the, the patterns on the wing from the image, but still kind of doing my own thing. And here's a part where I kind of felt like the butterfly was getting away from me. Once I started adding this black, I was starting to get a little bit nervous thinking this doesn't look very good. <laughs> this looks really amateur and, you know, not what I want. But again, I just kept going. I decided it really can't get any worse. So I might as well just keep going. And ultimately, I'm very happy with the way that the butterfly wing turned out. So I tell you things like that so that when you come across those points in your painting, and you will, where you're like, oh, I've messed it up. This is horrible horrible that you push through just always remember if it can't get any worse then what's the harm in continuing in seeing it through to the end in trying to figure out just how much more you could learn what else can you discover if you don't care how a painting turns out because if you don't care how a painting turns out you free yourself up to do absolutely anything and learn absolutely everything. So just some little black sketchy bits to get the idea of where the details are in the wing. Let's go back into some of our light colors. I'm going to mix up a color that's as close to white as possible, but still has a tiny hint of one color or another in there. And I think that is just a mixture of the burnt sienna and the, the Naples yellow, but I mixed it up quite a bit lighter, just using the very, very tip of my brush, getting more white and just kind of scribbling little hints of that color in there. Remember, what's going to make your butterfly look good is contrast. You have to have some very, very bright and you have to have some quite dark. And it's that contrast that's going to make your butterfly look good. If all of your butterfly is very light or very mid-tone or very dark, it's going to seem very flat. So that's what I'm focusing on here is getting some quite dark colors, but also some quite pale colors. So right now, I'm just doing my pale colors. Just scribbling them on. Like before, just kind of feeling it out and saying, do I want a light color here? If the answer ultimately is no, I'll put a dark color over it later. I'm 
much brighter, almost pure white there. Isn't it incredible what you can do with three colors? I mean, and black and white, obviously, but that yellow, kind of a red, brown, and blue. And that's what I've been working on with my Patreon group for the last month or so. We've been doing a lot of color theory and, you know, kind of talking about how with a red, a blue, and a yellow, you really can make just about any color you like. You can create an entire color palette and while I might get colors that are much more muted down with this color palette, this is still, you know, a color palette that I can use to create any painting I like. So I've got a brighter yellow there. There's a little bit of all three colors in there, a little bit more of that orange. But I love that I created the skull with three colors. You know, it's very antique looking, very aged, very rough looking. But then I used those exact same three colors and created something very delicate looking, almost shiny looking and, and you know, new looking. It's the exact same colors. It just depends on how you mix them and how you apply them. A little bit of bright white to kind of give a, I liked that. I thought that was kind of a peacock feather type effect there with the yellow and the orange and the bright white at the bottom. little more yellow and we'll fill in this big one. This big one is kind of what you're really going to be looking at because not only is it the largest detail on the butterfly wing, but it also kind of appears to be the pupil of what would be an eyeball in the skull. So it's, it's kind of dual purpose there. And so you want to make sure that you get this little spot to be quite interesting looking. So I made it that pale yellow color and then I took a bit of this darker orange color around the top edge where it meets the black. Keep a little bit of those orange and yellows in all of the little dots. And then just here and there throughout the wing, little bits on the edges there. And now I'm really starting to kind of, you know, uh, deviate from my reference image. I'm not trying to make this butterfly look exactly like that reference image anymore. I know kind of the direction I'm going and I'm just following where that leads. I'm going to go much darker in my blue here than I have. I'm going to keep a tiny hint of that Naples yellow in there, again, just to dampen the color a bit so it's not overly bright. And that ends up not being a dark enough blue for me. So as you can see here, I'm about to hold it up to the wing. It's about the exact same color as I have there. So I'm going to go back and darken it a bit more. I need a color that's much darker, much bluer here because I'm looking for that, you know, the, the contrast in the value. So I'm just lightly scumbling a tiny hint of this darker color through the blue area. And I'm going to include a little bit of it in the butterfly body as well.
I love the contrast of the blues and the oranges in this butterfly wing. I think it really helps bring a lot of life to it. Just taking that darker blue color a little bit over the legs. I felt like the legs were way too bright and they looked awkward and kind of stood out way too much. So I just darkened them a little bit there. And I actually am going to come back in just a little bit and darken them even more. Still just scumbling tiny hints of that dark blue, especially around the edge of the black where that black I felt like was super phony looking against the pale colors. If I introduce little bits of that blue to where the black meets that pale yellow, for example, I feel like it helps blend it in just a little bit more, makes it look like it belongs on the wing just a little bit more. And now I'm gonna take some of that blue and mix in the tiniest spot of black I want this to end up being a very, very dark version of that blue. It almost looks black on the plate, but on the canvas, you can tell it's got quite a bit of blue to it still. And I'm going to start going over those little black lines again. Again, that little bit of blue and the light scumbling motion is going to help pull it into the wing, make it look a little bit feathery, make it look like it belongs. See how that slightly bluer black makes that color feel a little bit more native. Let's get some over on this side of the wing in the blue area. The wing is another area where I feel like you really could drive yourself crazy. If you look at the reference image, there's all kinds of little zigzaggy bits of the, the black all throughout there. And I didn't want to go crazy trying to do all of that, which was one reason I didn't worry too much about covering all of the black of the canvas. I figured if any of it showed, it would help with that a little bit. Just don't make yourself crazy doing unnecessary details. I felt like those little details they weren't required to make it appear to be a butterfly that, you know, I could skip those details and you would still know it's a butterfly. Darkening those legs just a little bit more. Clean brush, tiny point of some thin white. And I'm just going to scumble in some bright white into a few areas on the wings. Let yourself go crazy with that white. Just don't try to blend 
Don't blend, no blending. Put it down, leave it alone. Love those bright little pops on the tip of the wing there. I was really starting to become happy with the wing at this point. Man, I was so afraid of it at first when I first started adding those little black swipes. Little tiny bits of white in there where we've got that super dark blue. little pop of white at the bottom of that shape because I wanted to try and get that peacock feather type type look on that one that I got on the other little dot don't forget a couple little points of light on the body and maybe on the legs here and there. Just a little black circle in the middle. Tiny little slash of white for the bottom of the circle just to keep it interesting. I also help, I think it helps kind of give that look of an eye. Makes it really interesting, draws you right to it. And just finalizing a couple little black details. I decided to start adding a little bit of some veining through the wing. And then I felt like it looked plopped on top, just like before when I very first started doing the black. So right here where I start doing these little veins, I liked Overall, I liked them, but I thought that they were so strong, even though they were like a hairline, that they kind of took away from the look. So, but notice I kept going, I just did them. And then I clean off my brush. I come back and I get a little white with a little matte medium, of, so it's a very thin, transparent white. And I'm just gonna lightly daub it over top of the black in a few places. My goal is not to obliterate that black, See that? You can still see it, but it just kind of presses it down, dampens it a little bit so it's not quite so dark. And then I felt like it looked much more like what I wanted. 
So sometimes you don't have to remove something you don't like. It, it might just be enough to, you know, mute the color just a little bit. Now we're going to start working on the background. I'm onto my half inch angle and I'm just going to fill in with pure black this part back here that's like the back of the skull. It's just all in pure black. I'm being pretty general with it though. I'm not trying to get too overly specific with it because ultimately it's going to blend in with the background. But I wanted to make sure that was black right there. Back to my half inch flat, a little bit of white, a little bit of Payne's gray, and I'm gonna start just kind of laying that down right here on this side. I decided I wanted a bit of a brighter color on the background right here next to the darkest side of the skull because that creates a bit of drama that I think is really exciting. If the background were just all black, it would be a little bit more boring. So I'm just laying that down and then scattering it out. trying to keep the I have kind of a white halo around the edge of the skull now from where I did the brush stroke in the first place so I'm kind of trying to go around it and pull that little line out just some Payne's gray there where I'm using a very dark color and going up against the very dark color of the skull, I am kind of letting them overlap just a little bit. I don't need a very hard line where I have dark on dark. Now I'm actually just picking up black. That's just black. I didn't clean off my brush, but I did just pick up black. See how I'm kind of doing soft brush strokes around the edge of the face there face there if it blends in a little bit it blends in a little bit that's fine if the face were very light right there I wouldn't do that but where it's very dark I like that a little matte medium just to blend things together a bit better See, so there I'm keeping a pretty tight line because I have a dark color up against a, a lighter color. So I want to make sure that I maintain that drama, the, you know, the contrast in the values is really exciting. Tiny poke of white, just brighten up this area. Ultimately, I come back once I do the other side and I lighten up this side quite a bit more. It just takes a second to do more black little matte medium I'm gonna just fill in this top corner and down the side with just black I haven't cleaned off my brush and I can reshape the skull a little I think it kind of got away from me right here the shape so I'm taking a little extra effort to get in there and, and kind of reshape things a little bit so I get asked a lot can I paint the background before you know because I paint the background last quite often and a lot of people are kind of freaked out by that and they want to know can they paint the background before they paint their subject you can but then if you need to make alterations to your subject you're gonna have to repaint the background anyway and you know the subject is much more important than the background ultimately so you might as well paint the background last so that you can make little corrections to your subject if you need to 
and you don't have to worry about painting over your background a million times. I really just think it's easier to paint the background last. Still just cleaning up that shape while I paint those edges black. And again here where the skull is very, very dark, I am letting this background color very gently blend into it. Now I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I don't need to clean it. And I'm going to get some Payne's Gray and some Ultramarine. Mix them together. A little bit of white. I actually got a little more white than I wanted. That was a little lighter than I wanted, but that's okay. And I'm just going to lay it down at the bottom here. Spread that around. And I'm going to come back with some black to blend it into both of those black areas. The black area under the skull and the black area next to the skull. Little Payne's gray on its own, a little more blue. Just start darkening that area because like I said, it was a little lighter than I actually wanted. cleaned off my brush. A little bit of black, a little bit of matte medium, and I'm going to start blending those two areas together. Just very light pressure. Remember, just very light pressure to blend. If I put flat pressure on, I'm just going to lay down more paint and I'm going to end up covering that more than I want. Tiny bit of black. Start blending it in there. Take a bit of that color right through there, the Payne's gray and blue and white. Not a lot, you don't want it to be too terribly bright under the teeth because that part would be in a little bit of shadow. But I do want to indicate that there's a bit of light on the table there still. Over on the other side, I'm just going to grab some black for now. But then I felt like that looked just a little too dark, so I do come back with just a tiny hint of that Payne's Ultramarine and white, just to give an indication of some light on that table. I am blending this with the cheek there, except for right there where it meets the brighter spot, but up around the side. I am letting that dark blend.
go back into the white and the panes lighten up that side edge a little bit of matte medium just for blending sake I just really wanted that dramatic that dramatic light over here to blend because that paint is just about dry a little bit of matte medium there helps to blend it or I can just grab a tiny bit of Payne's gray and that will help too see so just a tiny poke of Payne's gray blends it right in even though the paint is dry Just about done here. Introduce a tiny bit of light to the ground. And then I think, yep, after that, we are done. We're going to sign it and be done for the day. And there is your dramatic skull and butterfly. I hope you enjoyed painting this one with me. I know I felt like I was struggling several times through this painting, but when I felt myself struggling, I just kind of said, eh, oh well, it can't get any worse if I don't like the way it looks now. And I kept going and now I really, really love what I came out with. Now later this week, I'll be taking this canvas sheet and permanently mounting it so that it can easily be hung on a wall. And I'm gonna film that process to share it with you. If that's something you're interested in, make sure that you follow me over on Instagram. You can just search at Painting with Jane on Instagram and you'll find me there. I will make a quick little video showing you exactly how to do that there. Thank you as always to my awesome sponsor, Fredericks, who provided the excellent canvas sheets like I used in today's video. If you'd like to try them out as well, there's a link in the video description below to where you can get your very own canvas sheets. And thank you to all of you for painting with me every week. I'll see you next time.